everybody. God bless you tonight. What a tremendous privilege it is as always. Hallelujah to be back in the house of worship and to be in the house of praise. Certainly I'm grateful to God for those who have been traveling with us, traversing through our transition. You may know that God has moved us to a different place. Hallelujah. And God has brought us to new beginnings. Hallelujah. So if you are connected to us here at Hours of Deliverance and Faith Ministries, I want to encourage you to know that there should be some newness in your life. If you are connected to me and First Lady, there should be some newness going on somewhere in your life. Hallelujah. God has delivered us from the wilderness and he has brought us to the promised land. And certainly, before I get into my lesson on tonight, I want everybody to just get ready because Hours of Deliverance and Faith Ministries, God has given us new vision. God has given us new mandate and we're getting ready to unfold and unleash some things upon this world. Hallelujah. That God has told us to do. So we want you to keep your eyes open. We want you to keep your ears attent and get ready for what God is getting ready to do through you. So I want to just first and foremost thank God for allowing us to privilege to still yet stand behind this sacred desk. I couldn't wait, hallelujah, to get behind this sacred desk tonight so I can declare the counsel of God. God has been good to us. God has kept us and God has given us fresh oil and a new anointing, hallelujah, for a new task in a new beginning, in a new season, and in a new time and era. So I want you to strap your seat belts on and get ready for what thus saith the Lord. We're starting a new series on tonight and this series is going to be entitled part one hidden mysteries once again I'm starting a new series on tonight ladies and gentlemen and is entitled hidden mysteries how many know that all of us are dealing with some unexpected things in our life many of us are wondering why God did this happen to us we're wondering where is God what is going on? Why is all of this turmoil and travesty and cataclysm happening in my life? Why am I dealing with so much loss? Well, God told me he wants us to be healed. God wants you to be free. God wants you to be encouraged. And so we're going to start this series on tonight, Hidden Mysteries. But before we do, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. But before we go before the Lord in prayer, I want to take an opportunity to thank all of our members and all of those who have continued to support this ministry with your tithes and your offerings. How many of us realize that even though we might not be on, the tithes should still be rolling in. If you still want to be blessed, how many know the way to be blessed is to sow into the kingdom of God? This is good ground, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want to thank everyone who has continued to give their tithes and continue to sow into the kingdom of God. And you have helped us propagate, or in other words, push forward this glorious gospel. And that is indeed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that was a good place right there. Hallelujah. If you want to sow right now, you might not have paid your tithes on Sunday. You can pay them right now. I'll information is on the screen and we trust know and believe that God is certainly going to bless you in accordance with your cheerfulness and your bountiful giving to his kingdom in Jesus mighty name well ladies and gentlemen right where you are I want you to bow your heads as we go before the Lord in prayer father in Jesus mighty name Lord God we invoke your presence tonight we thank you for your mercy, your kindness, and your tender grace. We thank you for the blessings, Lord God, that you have loaded upon us on today. We thank you for keeping us by your power and by your unmerited favor. God, tonight we pray that you would have your way in our midst. God, your people need to be healed, set free, saved, and delivered, sanctified, hallelujah, from the bondage and the penalty of sin. God, we need to be enthusiastic about you and your purpose to which you have called and created us. And so, Father, we pray right now that you will speak a word from on high, a word that's relevant and relative, but more importantly, God, bring forth a transformative word. You have transitioned us to a better place. God, now cause your people to move to the place that you have predestined for them before the foundation of the world because your thoughts towards your people are thoughts of peace and not evil God you have an expectancy for us that is beyond us and so God we thank you tonight spirit of the living God speak for your servant hears and I have your way and it's in Jesus name that we pray amen amen ladies and gentlemen once again our subject tonight, the beginning of this series, is entitled Hidden Mysteries. And I want to draw your attention to 2 Kings chapter number 6. 
and we're going to begin reading at verse number 15. That's 2 Kings chapter number 6, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 15. This is indeed my foundational text for where God is going to continue to take us and move us forward in the lesson. The word of God says, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, my subject is hidden mysteries we all must understand that even though it seems like we're in a situation or circumstances that seem to be insurmountable we have to understand that God is sovereign God is with us God has everything under his sovereign control we have to understand we might look like we're defeated but there is no defeatedness in the life of the child of God and so it's important for us to understand tonight what is a mystery I want us to understand that as a child of God your life will be full of mysteries they will hit you unbeknownst to your attention they are going to come at you and in inopportune time when you least expect it the question then becomes how do you handle that which hit you out of nowhere it's a mystery. I'm going to ask you that question again. The question becomes, how do you deal with that which you did not expect it, that literally took your breath away, that took your joy, that took your peace and made you feel as if God has forgotten all about you? It's a hidden mystery. So then what is a mystery? Well, a mystery, beloved, is something that's difficult. It's something that's impossible to understand or even articulate and explain. A mystery that we all will deal with. In the Greek, it's mysterion. It's a mystery. Mysterion. It's a mystery. It's a condition or a quality of something that's been secret. It did not but it has not or rather been revealed to us. It's strange almost and even difficult to again articulate and explain. But watch this. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 10, the word of God encourages us. And this is what I want us all to remember on tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse 10. The word of God says, God hath revealed them to us. What? The secret things of God. He's revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit. Why? For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. I'm encouraged right here in this text. Why? Because the word of God tells us emphatically and succinctly that even when we pray in, we don't know what we have need of. We don't know how to pray, but the spirit make intercession for the people of God with groanings and murmurings that we cannot even utter out of our mouth. I'm encouraged with that. Why? Because there are things that we are going to experience, the hidden mysteries that come against us, that challenge our faith, that make us wonder where is God, that make us feel like God has forgotten about us and left us in our dilemma those things uh, that make you even y'all not gonna like this but it make us even feel like we want to walk away from God oh yes God has revealed it to me in my spirit somebody you're watching me even right now you have contemplated the fact whether or not because it seems as if God has left you in your circumstance and your situation for quite some time uh, you feel like you should even leave God himself well, I come to encourage you on tonight to know that you need to fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. In other words, God is encouraging us on tonight, church, to know that in spite of how we feel, in spite of what is going on in our world, watch this, in spite of what's going on in your marriage, in spite of what's going on in your school, in spite of what's going on in your mind, in your finances, wherever it's going on, 
on. God said, I will never withdraw my emotions from you. I will never withdraw my embrace. I will never withdraw my provision. I will never withdraw my healing. I will never withdraw my deliverance that you might need when you need it. I'm encouraged here. We must understand, beloved, that God reveals the secret things to us how? Once again, if y'all were listening to me, he reveals them to us by his spirit. This is why it's important for us to have the Holy Ghost. It's important for us to not just have the Holy Ghost. Here it is. It's important for us, First Lady, to let the Holy Ghost have us. Ah, how many of us have the Holy Ghost, but how many does the Holy Ghost not have? Uh, in other words, listen, I was talking with Apostle Hudson on today, my good brother, my friend, and we were talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. As we always do. And I made a comment, beloved, I want us to understand. God says to us tonight that you can have as much of him as you want. How many know that you can have as much of Jesus as you want? You can wake up with Jesus. You can go to work with Jesus. You can go to your break with Jesus. You can go home with Jesus. You can go to, rest, to the restaurant with Jesus. Wherever you go, you can have a prayer life. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about developing a relationship with Jesus the Christ. Why? Because here it is, beloved. There are going to come some hidden things that's going to come against you. And the old folks used to say it like this, first lady. Listen, if you stay prayed up, you won't have to be prayed up. Because uh, your prayers will keep you in a readiness state uh, to be able to counteract and come against that which is coming against you. Uh, it then will not become a mystery. Why? How many know that the attack, knowing that you're in a fight, knowing that you're in a battle is half the battle at, at there is. Amen? Let's move on. Beloved, I'm going deeper. I believe that God is changing our focus and he's changing the vision of his people. We must understand we see all the plagues in the world. We see all kind of cataclysm happening across the planet and it has become as if it's normal. Well, we must understand it's not normal. It is apparent for us to understand it's paramount that we understand what we see happening in the world today is not a mystery. Why? Because the Lord told us in the gospel of Matthew chapter number 24 what would happen in the last days before his return and he said there will be plagues upon the earth we got COVID still running rampant we got something called monkey pox what in the world is monkey pox it's another plague and we're just looking at these things like they're normal we have cataclysm going across the planet we have earthquakes we have floods we have people leaving here hallelujah unexpected Expectantly, at an alarming rate. Why? Because Jesus is soon to come. And so it's important for us knowing that Jesus is soon to come that we begin to shift our focus and shift our vision from where it is to where God wants it to be. Now, even in the midst of our trials, how many of us will admit that it's hard for us to maintain the focus that God wants us to focus on? In the midst of our trials, in the midst of what we suffer, what we tend to do is we lose our praise in God. We begin to lose our devotion with God. We stop reading the word of God. We stop giving God the worship and the praise that God alone deserves. Why? Because our focus and our vision, saints, is more upon how we feel rather than who God is. And more importantly, what God has already said. Watch this. In the midst of our trials, in the midst of our pain, and in, in the midst of the whirlwinds of life that all of us will need to go through, we must understand you don't have to go looking for them. They are going to find you. In the midst of the whirlwinds of life, God says to us that he wants us to know, he wants us to trust, and he wants us to believe. And watch this. He wants us to see that he, God, indeed has it all under, here it is again, his sovereign control. He sovereign In other words, what does that mean? That means that our God has dominant power. He has supreme authority over not some things, but over everything and every aspect of our life. And what you and I have to do tonight in the midst of those mysterions, in the midst of what hit us, that hurt us, what we have to do, church, is learn how to, here it is, 
we have to learn how to cultivate optimism in the midst of our pain and in the midst of what we're traversing through. And how do we do this? Well, we do this by learning the secret of contentment. How do we learn the secret of contentment? Well, we learn the secret of contentment by understanding. I need y'all to put this in the comment section for me. We learn the secret of contentment by understanding that our circumstances and our contentment are unrelated. Mm, it's quiet in the house. I'm going to make it plain for you in a minute. In other words, what I'm suggesting to you tonight is that true contentment is feeling and showing satisfaction with one's possessions, with your status in life, and with your situation. In spite of how bad your situation, your circumstance, and your status may be. It was the Apostle Paul. I'll prove it to you. He said in Philippians chapter number 4, beginning at verse number 11 through 13. Once again, that's Philippians 4, 11 through 13. The Apostle says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. In other words, let me break it down in layman terms. He's saying, I still had need. Don't think that I got it all together is what he's saying. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. He says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. In other words, he says, I know how to humble myself. Woo, we don't like that word. But we have to know how to humble ourselves and be content where God has us, where God has us. He said, I know how to humble myself and I know how to lift myself. He said, I know how to abound. Watch this. He didn't say in some places. He said everywhere and in all things. How many know that's some learning for us? He said, in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. Watch this. Here's where his strength came from. This is the power of this text, beloved. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to stop right here. In the midst of your mysteries, in the midst of what hits you, in the midst of what you're dealing with even right now, you have to draw strength from God himself. I told you he's sovereign. He has all power, supreme power, and all authority. Jesus rose from the grave. He said, all power is given unto me, hallelujah, in earth and under earth. And he said, behold, here it is. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents. And by no means shall anything hurt you. Why do we walk around hurt all the time? Why do we allow what people say about us to hurt us all the time and to make us feel inadequate about who we are? Could it be because we've forgotten whose we are? When Jesus said, behold, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deposit something in your spirit tonight so that you can understand that you have, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I want you to understand that you are the one. You are anointed for now. You have what it takes to accomplish what God has called you to, cre to accomplish in this earth realm. God created you to be creative. We serve a creative God. Uh, and so in the midst of whatever it is you're dealing with, you still have a creative ability within you yourself uh, to produce and if you're not producing here it is I'm going back to the introduction and the foundation of this series the question then becomes do you need to shift your focus and your vision so that you can understand so that we can understand who we are and whose we are we draw strength from God Nahum chapter number one and verse three says that the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. The Lord, the scripture says, has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust beneath his feet. We said it on last night for those who were not with us. Many of us were thinking that God is angry with us and for some of us, God could be potentially angry with us because we have gotten out of the will of God and for whoever I'm talking to 
to. I have to cry loud and spare not and lift up my voice like a trumpet in Zion. If you have walked away from God, this is the clarion call from God for the backslider to come back to God. God is just waiting on you. God wants you to remember that he still loves you. He's still looking at you as the father was looking at the prodigal son who walked away from him. You might feel that the anger of Lord of the Lord has been kindled against you and you might be guilty but God just wants you to repent he that sins listen we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous if any man sin let him confess his sins and God he's faithful and just to not only forgive us from all unrighteousness he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness all you have to do I don't know who I'm talking to but you do all you have to do is come back to God could it be that tonight we're dusty? The scripture just says that the storms and the clouds of life are the dust beneath the feet of God. Could it be that our praise is dusty? Could it be that our devotion is dusty? Our worship is dusty. Watch this. Our lifestyle is dusty. Our mentality is dusty. Why? Why? Because our vision is just on the storm and the clouds that we have forgotten what Nahum clearly told us here. And that is God will have his way in the whirlwinds and in the storms of our life. And we not not be dusty. We ought to be praiseworthy. We ought to be thinking on things that are true, on things that are just, uh, on things that are praiseworthy. We ought to be thinking about the goodness of God. Uh, your heart is still beating. You still have health and strength in your body. Food uh, on your table. My wife is healthy. My children are healthy. Baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, we feel with the Holy Ghost uh, and we're kept by the power of God. So why are we dusty tonight? Can I go deeper? Many of us are dealing, listen to me, church. Many of us are dealing with situations and circumstances tonight that have us now baffled and perplexed. In my conversation with many members, they are baffled and perplexed at what they're dealing with. Many of us are experiencing things tonight that we do not understand if we're honest. And we're now asking God, why do I have to go through this hard and difficult situation? It's ardent and arduous. I don't want to deal with this. Why am I dealing with this, God? It might be your marriage. It might be that job. It might be that rejection you're dealing with. It might be that stronghold that you seem to not be able to let go of I don't know what it is but you do and it has you in a perplexed state of mind it's an enigma that's what it is it's an enigma church well you might be asking me pastor apostle what is an enigma it's almost now that this is what an enigma is it's almost now that you can't even articulate and interpret how and why your life has taken you to where you are right now it's a hidden mystery have you forgotten that even as elisha said there's more that's with us than what's coming against us it's an enigma. How did I get to this place? Why do I feel the way I feel? I wake up in the morning. I don't know who I'm talking to. I wake up in the morning and don't want to get out of the bed. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go nowhere. We sign on the church only to log off five minutes after church started. Why? Because we've lost our joy. We've lost our peace. We've lost our zest for life. What is the zest for life? It's not the soap you buy at the grocery store. No. The zest for life is the purpose to which God has called you. That's what drives me out of the bed. That's what makes me want to go. Why? Because God has called and created me and anointed me for such a time as this. Watch this. Do you have peace tonight or are you now living in pieces? David said in Psalm 13, how long? This is what somebody has been praying. How long, David said, wilt thou forget me? Oh, Lord, forever, you feel like God has forgotten about you. He said, how long wilt thou hide thy face from me? 
How long shall I take counsel in my own soul? He felt like he had nobody to talk to. Had been sorrow in my heart daily. He felt sorry all the day long. He said, how long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? He felt like he was losing everywhere he went. David, in other words, here called on God and said, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Watch this. Then he said, lighten mine eyes. His eyes were so dim. Why? Because his vision was just on his pain. It was on his circumstance. It was on how he felt. He said, lighten mine eyes. In other words, lift me, God, from where I am, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Ladies and gentlemen, you might not have reached that point, but there are some hidden mysteries that will come against you in life that will make you even want to die. Uh, you might not have dealt with that yet. But Paul, the word of God says that the apostle Paul said himself that he spared for life himself. He wanted to die. Why? Because of his circumstance. Because of all that he was dealing with. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some things in life that will literally take your breath away. This is where David was. I want us to understand the world that we live in today. You see it like I do. The world is full of grief. Every time we turn on the television, you don't even have to turn on the television. Everybody is device prone. We can't have family time. Why? Because everybody's on a device somewhere in the same house in different rooms on different devices. But I guarantee you, you turn on the device, hallelujah to God, and all you see is cataclysm. All you see is a world full of grief, a world full of pain, a world full of sorrow, a world full of cruelty and injustice. And while here it is, some believers are able to triumph over it. Oh, yes, there are many saints that are able to triumph over everything we see. But watch this. Many are deeply shaken and unable to triumph in the midst of it. And they're wondering, where is God? And why has he let me down? Could that be you tonight? Well, I believe that's why the Lord tells us in the gospel of Matthew chapter number 11 and verse 28 and 29. Once again, Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Laden here, watch this. In the Greek is the word for tizzo. And for tizzo means to be overburdened with spiritual anxiety and feelings of worry and nervousness and unease about, here it is, an imminent event that's taken place in in your life and the uncertainty of its outcome. Somebody on tonight right now, you're dealing with a situation and the anxiety you haven't even stepped into the situation but you know it's going, coming down your road and you're anxious about the outcome of your situation. It could be your school. You're anxious about what's going to happen when I start school. The anxiety has gripped you now to the point where you're full of grief and you don't want to go to school. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight tonight, but I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody, you're looking for your great day of marriage, but the anxiety, you got wet feet now. You, hallelujah, you're worrying because how is the outgoing? You can't even enjoy the preparations of this great day. Why? Because you're worried about the outcome. You're thinking about your mother and your father. This ain't even in my notes, first lady. You're wondering about the divorces that you've seen and anxiety has now gripped you and now you're worrying. You're nervous. Someone's getting ready to start a new job. That last job didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Now you're worrying and overburdened. Here it is. Now watch this. It's all spiritual anxiety. Why? Because you have not put your vision and your focus and your trust in what the apostle Paul told us. He said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And now fear has gripped you. Ladies and gentlemen, shake that fear off on tonight. Why? Because the Bible says that fear have torment. You're tormenting yourself, worrying about burdens that you ought to give to Christ. He said, come unto me. Are you stuck in your dysfunction because you just won't come to God? And if you come to God, for some of us, we've given it to God and then we take it right back. The next day we open our eyes and we walk around with that which we said we gave God. And as I asked the church on last night, many of us say we trust God. But my question is, do you really trust God? Can God say to you, or the, rather the enemy, what he said about Job? Have you considered my servant? Can God put your name there? 
Can he allow the tribu tribulations of life, the pain and the anxiety to grip you so where you begin to suffer loss in so much that you don't lose your relationship with Christ? Job held fast to his integrity. Why? I believe it's because Job knew that he drained his strength from the Lord Jesus to Christ. And so will you. Jesus said, I'm back in Matthew 11, 28. Jesus said, I will give you rest. That's where someone is on tonight. You need to be, you need the rest of the Lord. The Lord said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. How many know that learning of Christ is a daily thing? Many of us, we visit Christ. Many of us, we visit the word of God when the man of God says, turn with me on a Sunday or a Bible class night and never to turn and open the Bible again for the rest of the week. Well, you don't eat, you don't feed your body that way. We don't even feed our animals once a week or twice a week. What makes us think that we're going to be nourished properly if we only stay in the word of God? What makes we think that we're going to have the rest of God when we don't spend time with God, the God that gives us rest? That's not learning of Christ. Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, I want you to note that the Lord didn't say that walking with him and serving him wouldn't come without a burden. But he did say that his burden is light. We said on last night, and then I'm going to move forward, that listen, many people think that the burden was the rugged cross that he was laid and nailed to. No, the burden was your sins and mine. That's a Selah moment. How many know that Jesus did not have to die, but he went to the cross so that you and I would not have to die eternally, but that we can have a qualitative life with him. So if he gave us his life, wouldn't it be behooving of us and incumbent upon us? In other words, it's the least thing that we can do is to give our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It's the least that we can do. It's our reasonable service. Why? Because he took our burdens upon himself. And with his stripes, we're healed today. Ladies and gentlemen, let me move into the meat of what God is saying to us. And I'm going to take my time with this. I want you to come back on next Tuesday as we go deeper. But what Jesus is saying to us in this text that I just gave you is that he has freed you and I from all of our burdens. Whatever it is you're dealing with, you must understand, we must understand that he who the son set free is free indeed. If you are bound, it's because you are allowing yourself to be bound. If you're struggling with a stronghold, it's because it's become a choice. I told one of my members, if you're sitting in that chair and that chair is the problem and I'm telling you that the chair is the problem and you get up out the chair and I come back next week and I see you sitting back in the same chair that has become the problem guess what the chair is not the problem you are now the problem because you've chosen to sit back in the chair the word of God says that the dog returns to his own vomit we are not dogs so why do we continue to return to that which keeps us bound God wants us to be free. He's freed us from all of our burdens. And he is the one, Jesus the Christ, is the one who will give us rest. And that rest is that Jesus promises us his love, his healing, his peace, and his deliverance that comes from him and him alone. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, your relationship, our relationship with God changes everything in our life. In so much that what comes against us that was hidden, that was a mystery, and a mysterion no longer becomes a mystery why because God has already told me that in this life here it is first lady he said ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer why because he God has overcome the world now if God has overcome the world and he lives rules rest and abides in me then there's nothing in this world that can overcome me Nothing in this world can overcome me. I told the apostle today, God told me, he said, son, I delivered you from three things. The first thing was the bondage and the penalty of sin. The second thing, I delivered you from yourself. And the third thing, I delivered you from people. 
Whoo, that went over your head. Y'all will get that at four o'clock in the morning. But listen, I'm in the book of Luke. Jesus went to the wilderness to be tempted of the enemy and he destroyed the enemy. And he only showed us three ways, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes uh, and the pride of life. If you grab a hold of yourself, if you grab a hold of God and you bring everything under subjection to the will, to the way and to the word of God, you cannot be defeated or overcome in this life. You may struggle. Don't don't miss me. You're going to struggle with some things, but how many know he that is born of God? I'm in the book of 1 John, hallelujah, overcomes the world. Why? Because he's over, already overcome. Ladies and gentlemen, God tells us in gospel, the gospel of John chapter 16 and 33, the Lord said these things, here it is again, I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. That's where you are. Somebody needs the peace of God tonight. Well, you're not going to find it on Facebook. You're not going to find it on TikTok. You're not going to find it on Instagram. You're not going to find it on PlayStation. You're not going to find it in your husband or your wife or your girlfriend. That might be an amenity, but you're going to find it in God. He said, in me, you might have peace. In the world, I just told you, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. If you really want to overcome, beloved, on tonight, get in God and let God get in you. I'm going to pick this back up next week, but I want to leave you with this. I don't know who you are and where you are on tonight, but somebody has lost their momentum. You've lost your momentum tonight. Somebody watching me tonight, you're not where you should be. You are not moving in the trajectory that God has told you to do or walk in. You have not been seeking God the way God wants you to seek him. You have not been praying the way God wants you to pray. God, the way God wants you to talk to him. We talk to God, but we give God all of our problems. Uh, who is that for on tonight? We talk to God, we just want him to do what we want him to do. But ladies and gentlemen, I say it all the time. God has, if we have an expectation, what makes us think that God doesn't have one himself? He said, if my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves here it is seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then shall we hear from heaven and God said he'll heal our land he'll give us back our momentum well if that's you on tonight God sent me out to tell you in the beginning of this series that he wants you to regain your momentum how do I do that apostle you do that by focusing on where is your vision and your focus tonight is it on what's hit you by surprise? Is it on the mysteries that you do not understand? Why you're still in the same place feeling that you should be further along in life? I say it all the time, that old jargon, we know how, this, how it goes in church. I thank God I might not be where I'm supposed to be, but I thank God uh, that I'm not where I used to be. Well, the question is, where should you be? If he's the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, if he who have begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, then you are right where you are supposed to be because God uh, is working a wheel in your life. He is the wheel in the wheel middle of a wheel. He is the potter. We are the clay. God has a purpose. We have to trust him in the midst of that purpose. Somebody on tonight, you're just maintaining and you're marking time in the same footsteps that you've been walking in so long. You're still doing things the way you've been doing them all the time. You're still praying the way you used to pray. You're still studying the way you used to study. You're worshiping, you praise the same way. You go to the same restaurant. You deal with the same people. Listen. You got to, if you want to do something different, you would rather be somebody different. How many know you got to do something different? I said newness in the beginning of this series. God is bringing about a newness in the life of his people. How many ready for newness? I can't hear nobody. How many ready for newness? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the type of preacher. If God is speaking to you, God expects a response. If you, if you respond in the chat section, if you respond online, we need to respond to God. Why? Because we can't keep doing the things we used to do, expecting to get a different result from God. And we're saying we received it from God. God moves anywhere in Scripture. When you see God moving upon the lives of people in a miraculous way, 
it's because they had tremendous need and what were they willing to do they were willing to go against the crowd they were willing to divorce themselves from the validation and the opinions of people they were willing to cry out in spite of what people thought about them they were ready to respond when everybody told them to shut up why because they wanted jesus the question is do you want jesus tonight I don't know how you feel about it, but I want Jesus tonight. When Jesus comes, he shakes up the crowd. He never shows up. He always shows up and shows out. And how many know when Jesus shows out, we'll shout for everything else. We'll shout for our favorite athlete. We'll shout at the concert. We'll shout at the TikTok movies. We'll shout at our reality shows. But when the word of God goes forth, we're quiet as a church mouse. I feel God talking to me. God wants a response from his people and he wants us to shift from the mysteries and stop being secretly frustrated and so as I hasten to my clothes on tonight I pray that you come back with me on next Tuesday I suggest to you beloved could it be that your frustration and the frustration and the despondency that you're feeling is a direct result of your burdens and your situational pressures that you're encountering could it be that the pressure of your circumstances and what you're going through has you instead of operating in aggressive trust and aggressive faith and continue adoration and praise to God in the midst of what's going on in your life, it now has you passive. unexpectedly and you're acting like the armor bearer did to Jehaziah. How are we going to fail through this? Are we going to die? Jehovah Mikadesh, Jehovah Tsikinu, Jehovah Nisi. He is our God. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last, and He's everything in between. Stand on the promises of God in the midst of what you're feeling and watch God bring you through. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you so much. We thank you, oh God, for your word on tonight. We pray, God, that this word did not fall upon deaf ears, but we pray, God, that it will draw strength, oh God, deep down in the spirits of this, your blessed people. Give these, your people, strength for their journey. And that is indeed this journey called life. To understand, Lord, that their strength comes from you, from delving and staying in the word of God. For as that which gives us strength and life and zest for your purpose to which you called and created us. God, we thank you and we believe by faith, knowing that no weapon formed, against us shall be able to prosper and even every tongue that rises against your people is already condemned in jesus mighty name god we thank you now be glorified through the furtherance of our life through this week calls us lord god to have a militant mentality to launch out into the deep for a great drought trusting you every step of the way for this god will be eternally grateful and we believe by faith that is done in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, beloved. I pray this word blessed you on tonight. Once again, this is just part one. I want you to come back. 
I'm going to take my time with this because, again, if you haven't reached that point yet, you're going to deal with some hidden mysteries that's going to literally take your breath of breath away. And I want you to be prepared. I want you to still have praise on your lips. Our praises of the Lord shall continually be in my mouth. I want you to let the devil know that you're still victorious and you're not a victim. Let the enemy know and everyone that's coming against you and everything that has taken your joy that tonight you've taken your joy and your peace back in Jesus mighty name I want to give you an opportunity to give once again into this great ground so we can continue to further this glorious gospel and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ then I want you to come back Thursday morning as we go before the Lord the Lord in prayer hallelujah for early shall we